Joining me now from the Zero Touch Automation Congress in Madrid is Antonio Elizondo, who is Head of Network Technology and Innovation Strategy at Telefonica. Antonio, good to see you again on Telecom TV. Telefonica first unveiled the Unica virtualization project back in 2014. What did it set out to achieve? Yeah, well, it's quite simple, no? Unica is the network virtualization program of uh, the Telefonica group, okay? Uh, as you know, Telefonica is a group of companies that we operate in different countries, uh, less, um, three, uh, think three countries in Europe, uh, Spain, United Kingdom and Germany, and uh, many countries in Latin America. So Unica for us represents a single opportunity for having the same uh, platform, the same infrastructure, okay, for, and virtualizing all sorts of uh, network functions on top of that. Uh, it's a project that uh, was born um, almost in the same time that uh, the concept of uh, NFV, Network Function Virtualization, arise in the market. And uh, we have been uh, working uh, with uh, to make Unica this concept a reality uh, f uh, for many years. So what are the objectives of Unica? Yeah, well, um, we understood uh, in, 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 in that moment when uh, the NFB concept arise that uh, we need, let's say, uh, something very versatile, an infrastructure that is very versatile, uh, in order to cope with uh, the, the uncertainty that uh, we have. It's, it's very difficult to, uh, to uh, foresee what is going to happen next in the future. If, uh, let's say, if it's computing, it's going to, uh, let's say, um, to impact a lot in, in, in our networks, if IoT communications, if uh, smart uh, connected vehicles. Uh, so uh, who knows who, what is the next uh, trend that is going to affect on the networks and how we need to adapt our networks very fast to provide the best uh, experience to our customers. So uh, what we realize is that the, what we need is to have a very versatile and flexible infrastructure on top of that uh, to be able to, to put the, the, let's say, the last innovations uh, from the markets from our suppliers. It's simply that. And where is Unica now in terms of deployment? What's the current status? Well, Unica has been successfully deployed in, let's say, the whole footprint of uh, Telefonica. So every single operation in Telefonica right now has its, its own uh, Unica domains, as uh, we call them. Okay, And uh, uh, we have uh, 35, more than uh, 40 uh, different uh, network functions that uh, can be put on top of Unica. And we are uh, deploying uh, them on different countries, on, let's say, uh, depending on the needs that the, the, the countries have. So there are some countries countries that are starting with, uh, let's say, the IMS, or the, with uh, the packet core, or they're with, uh, let's say, AAA PCRF uh, solutions. Uh, is, is, mm, since it's a very versatile infrastructure, what we are doing is, let's say, is uh, tackling the demand that uh, every single country has for uh, having a, a better way to grow no? the network. What were some of the major challenges that you were faced with during the Unica project that you've had to overcome? Well, there are many challenges that uh, I understand that somehow the, the whole industry are, let's say, sharing. Uh, one of them uh, was the maturity of uh, some of the technologies that we were using. For instance, uh, it's very typical to talk about OpenStack. And OpenStack was, uh, let's say, uh, mature enough for the typical uh, deployments for IT virtualization, but was not a very, let's say, uh, fine-tune no, for uh, network functions that uh, could need, um, let's say, a higher uh, bandwidth. Okay, so we had to uh, to work with uh, many different suppliers in what we call strategic collaborations to, to try to fix uh, OpenStack and to prepare for that. Another big challenge was in the Omunica uh, solution, uh, how to uh, to, to have the, the, the right uh, assurance um, uh, solutions for, uh, to, to make sure at the end when if something fails in the infrastructure or in let's say on a network function to understand what is the service impacted the customer that has been finally impacted. Uh, another challenge was how uh, everything related to uh, security. Uh, in, in an environment like that, where you are putting different network functions from different suppliers, you need to make that, uh, well, the, to have the right isolation, no? and, uh, 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 and to understand that the traffic and the data for uh, your customers is going to be, let's say, uh, well taken care. 
you engage with a lot of vendors uh, for Unica, large established ones and a lot of uh, smaller, newer, even startups. What do you need from this enlarged vendor ecosystem? How can they help you deliver on the goals of Unica? Well, one of the things that we need to, to make possible, let's say, uh, that uh, there is a higher competition, uh, let's say, and that uh, uh, to have the opportunity that uh, smaller and medium companies that are, let's say, very innovative uh, to, to, to have the chance no, to, uh, to be able to demonstrate that the products, the solutions uh, uh, are, are, are worth the effort to deploy, uh, what we need is somehow to lower the barriers so that uh, uh, well, typically in our industry, we are used to very large and costful uh, integrations. No, we need to avoid that. No, and, uh, and for avoiding that, uh, the, let's say the next challenge that uh, that we are seeing, and this is something not, uh, that we uh, uh, have been trying no, to, to lead uh, for, for uh, three years on, uh, is precisely on uh, having a sort of common information model. Uh, in, in our case with uh, OSM, with Open Source Mano, and uh, thanks to, to, uh, to that, uh, we may avoid, uh, let's say, um, to have this uh, sort of long integrations and uh, starting to have, uh, let's say, uh, prepare products for being automated from day zero, okay, uh, to deploy them, and later on, uh, since uh, these products will be uh, perfectly packaged with, uh, let's say, with the all uh, the software that is needed to operate them in automated fashion. That's what OSM needs, no? that, uh, let's say, somehow that information model is adopted and uh, we uh, may um, provide the opportunity to every innovator in, in the industry to, to be a supplier for us. What's next for Unica? How is the project evolving and how does it embrace 5G and edge computing? Yeah, well, basically, this is not a secret. Uh, the ambition of the Telefonica has been always to virtualize uh, most of the network, okay? And uh, let's say the big part of the network is precisely in, in what we call the edge of our networks, okay? So uh, in, in the so-called central offices. Uh, so there are different network functions there, the different functionality that uh, is host there, uh, everything that uh, deals with, for instance, uh, terminating sessions of uh, our customers uh, in the fixed access is, is there, uh, things related with uh, uh, opticals, with the read access. So uh, we need to, 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 to make possible that Unica is getting closer and closer to this computing, uh, to the edge, and uh, we have also the opportunity, the, well, uh, in the, the market is talking about uh, edge computing, so uh, since uh, we have a lot of state uh, there, real estate uh, with our central offices, we have a single opportunity to offer cloud computing uh, services that are very convenient in terms of uh, lower latencies, for instance, or in terms of uh, having uh, your data, the data of, uh, of the customers, very close to where they are being generated and where they are being consumed. Okay, so there are a series of advantages that uh, we think that uh, uh, distributing the network and let's say being able to offer these edge computing uh, services closer to, uh, to the customer, uh, we may offer at the end. Are our communications networks now evolving into cloud native architectures? Well, I think that uh, the industry is following um, something that was expected, no, a um, natural step. So our big, uh, our traditional suppliers, uh, uh, let's say, have st uh, started by porting the software that uh, were running in physical appliances uh, to make it run it on, let's say, common uh, servers. Uh, uh, then. The, 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 the next uh, progress that uh, was expected is, well, uh, uh, how to automate uh, the operation all of that. And it's true that, uh, for instance, in, in, let's say, the typical cloud applications are well thought no? for, for, for doing that. Uh, the, 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 the people that are used to, uh, to make uh, their applications run in, in a cloud environment uh, have thought a lot on how to automate uh, from, let's say, the initial deployment and uh, how later on to, uh, to, to, uh, to, to maintain and to support, uh, let's say, the different uh, patches, the different upgrades, how to reconfigure things. Okay, so when we talk about the uh, cloud nativeness, it's basically to understand that uh, once that you go to a very automated uh, framework, okay, how 
to get uh, advantage on all these sort of things, uh, instead of uh, thinking that you are putting your software in a black box and nobody else is going to touch it. Okay, so it's it's adopting no a new let's say the the modern recent uh, the modern uh, software practices basically. Antonio, thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.